The cold waters of the Tasman Sea, off the southeast coast of Australia, set the stage for a drama in which one man looks, quite literally, into the jaws of death. In these murky waters, predators routinely prowl the kelp beds for food. One of them is Eric Neros, who makes a living diving for abalone, shellfish that are harvested and sold as a delicacy. I was going out for a typical day's diving down to one of my favourite areas, which is called Cape Howe. There's a lot of inshore and offshore reefs there, and the abalone are normally fairly abundant compared to most of our other areas. His air supply comes from a pump on board his fishing boat, manned by his 16-year-old son, Mark. There was about five knots of wind, but it was calm. Nice day down there. But 25 feet below, visibility is poor. A typical day for abalone fishing. I was about to bump off a good size abalone and a huge force hit me. Everything went black. Half of Eric's body is inside the jaws of a massive great white. I felt like a vice-like pressure upon my chest and back. I didn't realise I was actually in a shark until it shook me sideways. I realised I was actually getting eaten alive. I've never felt fear like that in my entire life. I really thought my time was up. Great whites ambush their prey at speeds of up to 20 miles per hour and tend to strike from behind and below. Eric's head-on encounter with the shark is unusual, and it gives him a fighting chance. I put my hand up on the side of the shark's face and felt an object like half a tennis ball covered in slimy membrane. I'd found the eye. He squeezes it, and the shark briefly opens its jaw. Eric starts to back out. But the bottom jaw closed again, this time over my face mask. I felt my nose break and some teeth started to penetrate in the back of my head. Bleeding and running out of breath, he squeezes the eye again and he's free. After the longest minute of his life, Eric breaks the surface and shouts to his son for help. With a row of puncture wounds across his chest and back, Eric is sped back to port and Mark puts out a call for help. One hour later, Eric and Mark arrive at Eden Wharf. By then, an astonished crowd is there to see the incredible sight of Eric stepping onto the dock under his own power, his catch of abalone firmly in hand. 